Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Welcome to the Worry-Free Retirement with your host, the author and creator of the Worry-Free Retirement himself, Tony Walker. And hello and welcome to the Worry-Free Retirement. I am Tony Walker. And for the next 28 minutes and 30 seconds, you're about to watch the only show in the country that is dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. So we hope you're a saver. And as you're watching this show, we hope the information is helpful to you. Uh, as I like to say, I've been doing this almost 30 years now and, and uh, actually been in the TV business as well as I've acted as a financial advisor. I had a show years ago called Your Mo Money Matters. I've been up in the Louisville, Kentucky market on a show called Wave 3 Listens Live for about six years and of course now the Worry Free Retirement. And I can tell you there's not many TV shows, not much uh, information out there whose information is really dedicated towards savers. As we'll see on the show today, we're going to hit on this. A lot of information out there, financial information, but it tends to be towards what I call investors. Uh, for those of you who might be seeing this for the first time, again, this is a, a tape-recorded show out of Louisville, Kentucky. Today's date is December 16th, 2013. We say that just in case things may have changed since we got the rebroadcast in your area. If you're down in the South Central Kentucky area, let me say this. Uh, I'm available to meet with you in person at no cost or obligation. Of course, all you have to do to uh, find out more about our operation and our firm, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, give you all the information you need. There's even a little place up there at the top where you can click on Meet with Tony or Contact Tony. And also down at the very bottom of the page, if you're outside the Southern Kentucky area, outside the Southern Kentucky area, please note, you'll see that little box, Find an Advisor in Your Area. And this gives you an opportunity to meet with someone at no cost or obligation who happens to be in one of our markets outside the Southern Kentucky viewing area. And finally, don't forget, if you would like to find out more about this concept of being a saver and understanding your financial personality, uh, recently in the last year or so, I've created a tool called the Three Personalities website. It's threepersonalities.com. You can certainly go there and take the free test to find out more about what I believe is going to be a game changer, and that is understanding your financial personality. For too many years, folks, people have been uh, kind of herded, as I like to say, into all these various products without really the financial world knowing much about you. They've kind of got this one size fits all mentality and I believe that's an error. So what I've tried to do with my background in psychology is try to create a way for you to understand more about your financial personality. As you learn more about that, then you can select products and services that hopefully fit more with your personal situation, not necessarily what the financial world is telling you to do. Well, as always, uh, the show would be amiss if we didn't introduce to you America's favorite financial sidekick. Before we get started today, let's talk to Mr. Aaron Orander. <laughs> Aaron, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you again, Tony. Yeah, good weekend for you? Yeah, it was okay. You know, not not real exciting, you know, just still putting Christmas decorations up. I, I feel like we're going to be putting decorations <laughs> up until Christmas Eve and then just take them all down. My uh, grandfather used to, you know, I always talk about him and Christmas. He never got into it. And every time after he'd do his check thing and he'd sit around and watch everybody tearing the packages knowing how much time they spent. <laughs> and, you know, was it 15, 20 minutes and it's all over with? And he'd always say stuff like, well, now, was that really worth it? <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of a Scrooge. But looking back, it was funny. It's like you go months and months and back then, you know, weeks or whatever. And then you open up these gifts and it's like, okay, it's all over with. You know, Now what? Now what do we do? <laughs> Eat? Okay. <laughs> Um, we're going to start off a little different. You know, usually we'll have a Tony in the Trenches a little later in the show, and I'm going to try to try to figure out how to build this up. But I th thought what we just do is just jump right to it. What we Go did ahead. was uh, a gentleman who got to know me here in the Louisville area, actually is a high school teacher in economics, and he had this question for us. So let's start off with the question, and then I think we'll get into more of the meat of the program. So folks, watch this particular question on Tony in the Trenches dealing with a high school teacher asking a very good question. Hey, Tony, I'm a high school economics teacher here in Louisville. You talk about economic opportunity costs. In class, we talk about opportunity costs, but it seems as though the financial world ignores that. Why is that? That seems like a pretty important concept. Interesting uh, opportunity cost. 
uh, and we're going to show some B-roll in just a second. Let me ask you something, Aaron. You're in your early 30s, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Going back to your high school days, how much did you, well, did you even hear, hear about the term opportunity cost in high school? Not at all. You, my, probably, you probably thought that meant, meant missing out on a date with somebody yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I lost that opportunity. I mean, but financially, you didn't even know what that term meant, right? Not at all. Did no. you have any courses in high school that you remember that really dealt with much outside of basic math? I mean, no, I was, I, you bring up math. I was just getting ready to say probably the closest, you know, financial courses that we had in my high school would be math related. But I don't remember any kind of economics courses or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. to prep kids for the real world and how money really works and how they should make it work for them. And, and now that you've kind of been around me and working as my media coordinator, you go to a lot of my workshops, you mm -hmm. see a lot of adults there. I'm always hitting on opportunity cost. How would you say the adults tend to react to that? Do you get the impression that most adults have even really heard of this concept of opportunity cost? Can you get a feel for that when you're in the workshops kind of viewing it and, and filming them? In all honesty, I, I feel like some of them do get it, but I feel like there's a lot of them that that don't. They may have never heard of it before, mm -hmm. or if they have heard of it, they just they really might kind of know the ballpark of what the definition is, but not really the the meat of it, the details How of it. How it practically plays out right. in finance. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, what we did is this gentleman, folks, uh, he, again, he teaches at a local high school in Louisville, Kentucky, asked me and Aaron to come out. Aaron shot some vi uh, video of that. So basically, there he is. He's introducing me. This was a fun, uh, yeah, there was a little bit of applause there. There I am showing off the book, Don't Follow the Herd. A lot of potential clients sitting in there, Aaron. I hope I can live long enough to serve them, obviously, seniors in high schools. Uh, we didn't show the kids on there, obviously, folks. Uh, we didn't want to do that for various reasons. But yeah, there are students in there. And Aaron, you made a comment. You said, Tony, how and changed a bit. The, the people in the back tended to talk a oh, little no. more amongst themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and then nope. the ones up front were very, you know, attentive. But how, what was your take on that overall? What did you think the kids thought of my instruction on opportunity cost there? You know, I'll be honest, I was a little jealous of the kids because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm finally at that age now where I can say to younger kids, man, just pay attention or man if I can go back and when I was your age or whatever you know it makes you feel like you're like really old I'm not really old but you know just seeing the high school kids it's like okay you really need to pay attention to this stuff and they were I felt like they were really really attentive they had some good answers you know Tony would throw out some questions and of course you know there you know there's the handful of kids that you're like all right are they paying attention or are they you know sitting there doodling a you know a cartoon or whatever but the, uh, most of them were really on point and really knew what you were talking about we should have inserted some b-roll where act like they're writing and then you could have zoomed in and they're drawing a cartoon of me cartoon or with arrows Tony or flying something. or something <laughs> yeah um, Okay, so we're kind of trying to segue, and we're going to be talking about opportunity cost a little more, folks, and we're going to also get to later on what to do with those 401ks and IRAs and a little bit of that. But one of the things I told the young folks there, and we'll talk about this in a second, is how to use what we call dividend participating whole life. So last week, if you'll remember, some of you, we talked about gifting assets to younger folks, maybe your kids and grandkids. We're going to show you a strategy that can really help them. Now, before we go to uh, break here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do. So, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you mind? No, not at all. Speaking of opportunity costs, folks. You know, the average person I work with, their age is 55 and above. The worry for your retirement is dealing with people at or near retirement. And before we came on the show, I grabbed a copy of the Wall Street. And last week we talked about how investments out there are very confusing, and how people who are savers need to be very careful of getting caught up into this. So I'm going to use Aaron as my guinea pig. Aaron, I want you to take just a minute or two before we go to break. This is one Wall Street Journal section dated what's today, Monday, December 16th. Okay. Okay. Look through there, front and back, while I'm just sitting here. Get a. If you want to get a close up of Aaron acting like he's studious here, we probably ought to get him a smoking jacket and there a pipe. There we go. Yeah. 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 Look like you know. What you're like. Read, read a couple headlines and just a couple things and just keep flipping. Okay. Let's see. Um, front page right here. We got warnings about earnings. Send a message. What's it say right underneath? Um, that let's little see. section. Um, from buy recommendations to earning forecasts, they routinely set the bar too high when predicting outcomes far in the future. So this is, yeah, talking about the stock market, remember okay. the word predicting. Um, investors hungry for U.S. corporate bonds. That article's talking about the difference between corporate and treasuries, um, all right. Investment advice for 2014. <laughs> Three financial advisors offer their predictions for the stock and bond markets. Predictions, okay, keep okay. going. Um, what else we got here? 
Investors seek tips via tweets. <laughs> How to evaluate your financial advisor. The most common way is to compare a portfolio against a popular index. It also may be the worst way. <laughs> so good, bad, which was it? Okay, keep turning, but we're gonna run out of time. I know yeah. I um, let's see, oh, well, let's go to the back page here. Uh, bursting the stock market bubble, bubble. And that's talking about a, a, ad nauseum almost at how difficult it is to predict the buzzle, bubble and is the bubble getting ready to burst? You know, we talked about, are we in a bubble now? So folks, if you're, kind of, if you're hearing those articles, the reason we gave that, for those of you who say, oh man, Tony, I love that stuff. What are you talking about? That makes complete sense to me. You're an investor. Maybe some of this information is good, maybe not for you. If you're the type of person that's probably like Aaron or even like me sometimes, even though I'm a registered investment advisor and you realize, hey, they're just predicting that stuff. Sounds like gambling to me. I want something safe, secure, certain. I don't want to be in the prediction business. You're going to want to stay tuned because this information I'm going to be sharing throughout the show is dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. I'm Tony Walker. We'll be right, right back with some things you can count on. How would you like to find a trusted advisor in your area who practices and preaches the same safe money solutions that I speak of on this program? Well, you can by simply logging on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and clicking on the Find an Advisor link. Once there, just fill out the confidential profile and submit it. This free service is available to savers who are serious about safeguarding their money. So what are you waiting for? Stop worrying and log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome back to the Worry Free Retirement. I'm Tony Walker, and we forgot to mention the all important free gifts. Great time of the year to get all three of my books absolutely free The Worry Free Retirement, Don't Follow the Herd, and The Three Personalities of Money. Well, how do you get these three free books? It's real easy. If you jump in line quick, you go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, you go up to Contact Tony up in the top portion of the website. Click on Contact Tony and just sit on, Just simply say that I want all three of the free books, the first 10 people in all of the markets to request them will get those three free books free, a $49 value. Now you do have to put your full name, mailing address, and phone number to get the books. If you leave any of that out, we cannot send you the books. So TonyWalkerFinancial.com, be the first 10 in all the markets and we'll get those to you. And I know you're going to enjoy the reading and you're going to find out more about what it's like to be a saver and finally read a lot of information that's dedicated to helping you instead of all this investment advice you keep getting. By the way, speaking of the website, many of you have been going to the website and asking questions via email and that's perfectly fine. i give an example. I'm just going to look down at the computer. In fact, what happens is over the weekend, this show is broadcast on weekends throughout the, uh, a lot of the markets. So we come in. Uh, I'm away from the office. The uh, main offices are located in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And one of my assistants will send these to me. So as an example, here's the kind of questions I get all the time. So when people say, Tony, you really are in the financial trenches. This is what we're talking about. Here's one that came in from an Amy in Greenville, Kentucky over the weekend. Says, my husband and I are in pretty good shape, saving both in retirement funds and in general savings for emergencies. However, we have not really saved for college. And our first child is heading off to college next fall. Would we be better off taking out a loan to pay for school or use some of our retirement funds? That's an example of a question. Let me call up one here, another one. Oh, this was interesting. Because I do work in the investment world, that's how I make my living. Here's somebody that just simply stated, uh, this is Jim, he's from out of state, says if I invest with you, what happens if I move out of state? Well, there are certain rules and that's why we have other advisors throughout the other states. Depending on where you're located, as an investment advisor, sometimes I can work with you, sometimes I can't. What I would suggest you do if you're watching this program is if you're not sure at all where you're located in terms of other advisors, how this works, how we get paid. You're certainly welcome to talk to me in person. We've even got the toll-free number on there directly to my office. Just say, hey, I was watching the show. Could I speak with Tony personally? I just have a few personal questions to ask him. I'm always happy to talk with people in person. All right, let's think about this a minute, folks. Um, we've talked about opportunity cost. We're gonna get into 401ks and IRAs in just a second. But here's an example. I wanna walk over to the whiteboard and let's kind of talk about what we've, uh, came through last week with opportunity cost. This is really interesting. One thing about being in this business for almost 30 years, as the old saying goes, what goes around comes around. 
I want to show you an article on the Elmo here, if Aaron's ready with it. This just was in the same Wall Street Journal that we just got through reading about. This is dealing with what's called survivorship life insurance, and it says it appears to be on the rise. Now, what it's saying is there are two life policies in one, and as you can see there in the middle of the page, it says a single survivorship policy is generally cheaper than two individual life insurance policies. All right, thank you. What are they even talking about here? First of all, the traditional life insurance pays for a death benefit on one person. So for instance, I have life insurance on myself, and then I've purchased a life insurance policy on my wife, and then I have three children, my oldest boy, who's now 27, I purchased a life insurance policy on him at age 23, which we're gonna talk about that in just a second, and then as my other two hit age 23, I'll buy those for them as well. <clears throat> but back in the 80s when I was doing major estate planning, something came out all the way back in the 80s called survivorship life insurance. And here's where the uh, example would be here. Let me kind of show you on the whiteboard and I'll explain this. What we used to do back in the 80s, okay, back then, if you were worth more than $600,000, if your assets were worth more than $600,000, back in those days, you had estate taxes on top of the 600,000. So let's say somebody was worth a million dollars, all right, I'm gonna, this is very simplified. It's a little more complicated than this, but just to show you how it would work. So basically, at their death, especially at the second death, that's when all the estate taxes are due from the federal level, you would have an estate worth 400,000. Well, the government would say, well, you get a $600,000 exemption or what we call a credit, that's called the unified credit. So let's just say the estate tax rate was 40% on that, so you owe Uncle Sam $160,000, all right? So people would say, well, golly, where are we gonna come up with the money? Or maybe you had a farm or business and your heirs would say, well, I can't just surrender all this stuff and get 160,000. So what we would do, we would come in back then and we would buy, and again, this is back in the 80s, folks, what was called a second to die life insurance policy. And the, th the whole thinking was, and everybody was in on this deal, the accountants, the attorneys, myself who sold life insurance at the time, we would buy it because guess what? Everybody said, it was cheaper. Now, why is it cheaper? What is this article referring to? Because what the insurance companies know, remember folks, they're just like everybody else. They're in this to make a buck too. They're not gonna give this stuff away. So what the insurance companies know is if they put, let's say we've got two 65 year olds, okay? Husband and wife, 65 year olds. They know from an actuary standpoint, if they put both of those 65 year olds on one policy, and let's say the premium is $10,000 a year, which for these type of policies, that's what you're generally looking at uh, for large face amounts. So let's walk through this. Two 65 year olds, second to die policy, it will not pay till the second death, 10,000 a year, and when the second one dies, Aaron, watch this closely, the heirs get a million dollars. Okay, now let's say we just bought it on Tony in this example. So Tony buys just a half million dollar policy on himself and pays $10,000 a year. You with me, Aaron? Okay. Why, and let's just say these were the exact premiums. Why is this one so much more expensive than this one? This is just on me and it's only a half a million. Well, because you're covering two people. Covering two people, so they know, remember, opportunity cost, folks. The insurance company knows that they've got this money much, much longer to work with. So what's the insurance company doing with your money? They're investing your money, knowing that it's probably gonna be a very long time before they have to pay out a million. Now, they just insured Tony, Tony could die running up and down the interstate today. So if Tony dies today, they've got to come up with a half million dollars, Aaron, now. And also they lose the $10,000 because at death, they lost the 10,000, so they don't get to invest that. So folks, here's what I'd like to say. There's a difference between low cost and cheap. Remember we've talked about this. Whenever something is cheap, whenever you hear that, generally it means you're probably not gonna get a lot of money back or somebody's gonna benefit in the long run. There's no such thing as a free lunch. When you're doing financial planning or retirement planning, or even if you're looking at life insurance, we're gonna see this when we come back to break. The best type of life insurance to get is the life insurance that's gonna pay off at your death at the least amount of cost. And sometimes term insurance, survivorship insurance, when you hear the word cheap, it's not cheap at all. And in a second, I'm gonna show you an example of how we can combat these high cost of term life insurance and how you can benefit you and your family tax-free. I'm Tony Walker, you stay tuned, I'll be right back.
For nearly 30 years, I've made it my life's work to help savers worry less about money. And now I invite you to personally contact me to discuss your situation to see if I can help you. It's very easy. You just log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and click on the Meet with Tony link. Or if you like, you can attend one of my free financial workshops. As always, there's never any cost or obligation to meet and discuss your situation in private. So what are you waiting for? Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Welcome back. I'm Tony Walker to the Worry-Free Retirement, the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. I want to pick up from where we left off last week because we were dealing with this whole issue of what to do with a 401k or IRA. Now keep in mind, this show, the information is geared towards people at or near retirement. Generally, we work with people at the age of 50 or above. I like to call they're either at half time or they're in the second half of life. But as we deal with these 401ks and IRAs, when I see in my practice, it is the largest asset outside of a home that the average American has. So you've got this 401k or this IRA, and man, you've been funding it, you're all excited, but what you forget is the tax man is waiting to get their fair share. So what do you do with these 401k or IRAs? Let's go over these options again, and then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about life insurance as an option, all right? You have a 401k or IRA here. You can do, you can convert it, this would mean that you convert it to a Roth IRA, and we can help people with this. But again, if you take an IRA and convert it to a Roth, you're gonna to have to pay the taxes then, so you gotta be aware of that. You can insure it. I studied under a gentleman named Ed Slott. Ed Slott's got a lot of great reading material on IRAs and how to parlay those into some more money for you. You can insure it with life insurance, okay? A great way, doesn't require as much taxes. You take the money out each year to pay the premium. Remember we talked about this, you can gift it. I'm gonna show you what to do with the gift. In other words, you could take out last week, we used the example of 14,000. You pay the tax and in this example, you give $10,000 a year away to kids or grandkids tax free. You can stretch it. What that means is you just take out your RMD or at death, the heirs that you have, and we're gonna talk about stretch IRAs next week. I just had a call uh, this past week. I had a client who passed away. The client left the money, she didn't have any family, left the money to a good friend of hers. So now I have to meet with a good friend because if the good friend doesn't play it right, she's gonna have to owe taxes. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to stretch that IRA, all right? You can take RMDs, that's when you turn 70 and a half, and we can help you with that type of thing. And finally, you can just take the money out and spend it. All right, now here's what I wanted to talk about. All right, we talk about survivorship life insurance. You got everybody and his brother talking about buying term insurance. By the way, Penn State did a study on term insurance, folks. The majority of people that buy term life insurance never keep it, never collect on it. It's probably the most expensive proposition out there. It is not cheap. So here was one example. I wanna show you what I'm doing for my own son, just to show you, put my money where my mouth is, or at this case, where Philip's mouth is. Actually, I called him the other day. I said, hey, Philip, Tiger, you're making pretty good money now. I'm gonna have to have you start paying the premium, which he agreed, thank goodness, because the premium is due from now on. But let me show you, uh, Aaron's over at the Elmo. Aaron, let's show, this came out of, this is on page 110 of the book, all right, and don't follow the herd. You can get this information right out of the book, but look at this. So Philip, at 23, he's 27, I'm gifting the money, so it's tax-free, $500 a month or $6,000 a year. Now just point to it, Aaron, because that book is a brand new book. Go down to age 65, just kind of point your pen there, and slide over to cash value. What's that say? Is that, uh, it should be 883, isn't it? 883,743. Okay, 883,000. And then beside that, look at the death benefit. What's, what's that say? 1,774,275. Okay, let's throw these up on the board then. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. All right, look at this. Folks, if Philip just pays $500 a month, and keep in mind that premium is guaranteed to never go up, all right? And let's say by the time Philip is 65, these are very conservative assumptions too. We're not in the stock market. We're not risking his money. Philip has access to this money anytime he wants to, so I can show him how to become his own banker. Uh, but look at this, at age 65, let's go over those numbers again. Philip has $883,000 of cash he could use for anything he wants. If Philip were to pass away at age 65, 
the death benefit has grown to $1.7 million. And by the way, folks, that is completely tax-free. You try throwing that much money into an IRA or 401k, yeah, it might be worth $1.7 million, for instance, but what are the taxes on it? Who knows? The second thing you can do, I did this quick calculation on Roth. Let's say you could do the same thing. You could take the money out of your IRA, do it what we're doing here, gift it to your child or grandchild. As long as they have wages, they could invest it in a Roth IRA. We talked about this last week. If they put the same amount of money in a Roth at 5%, they'd have the same amount of money, but they would have tax-free income for the rest of their life. I hope you're getting the gist of opportunity cost and the many strategies available for savers. I'm Tony Walker. I'll have a few closing comments. You stay tuned for the Word for Retirement. I'll be right back. How would you like to find a trusted advisor in your area who practices and preaches the same safe money solutions that I speak of on this program? Well, you can by simply logging on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and clicking on the Find an Advisor link. Once there, just fill out the confidential profile and submit it. This free service is available to savers who are serious about safeguarding their money. So what are you waiting for? Stop worrying and log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Just a reminder, we want you to go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and click on the top where it says Contact Tony. There, you can fill out all the information, and if you're one of the first 10 in each market to do so, you'll receive all three of Tony's books absolutely free. This is a $49 value. All three books that you see right there on your screen, you'll receive for free. Thank you, Aaron, very much. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Worry Free Retirement. I'm Tony Walker. You have a good day. You've been watching The Worry-Free Retirement with financial advisor Tony Walker. To ask Tony a question or to find an advisor in your area, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com.